Rebel Galaxy is a game you should probably know about, even if you're not into space games and laser beams and whatnot, which this game clearly has plenty of, but if anything, because some of your favorite designers and developers built this. All two of them. These two guys, Travis Baldry and Eric Schaefer, have had their hands on things from Mythos to Torchlight, Torchlight 2, to Diablo, to Diablo 2. These guys have had their hands on or have created some pretty well-known IPs. And Rebel Galaxy should be up on that list because this game has so much content and so many things to do that it is just it's it's huge. It's just such a huge game. I don't even know where to, I don't even know where to begin. Let's how about we just start with how you start off as a new player. Say hello to the UESC piece of garbage. This is your very first ship. It is not that fantastic of a ship. However, I have accidentally done some pretty exciting things with this starter ship with nothing on it. No mods, no no extra guns, no no uh, bonus shields or deflectors or anything. I, I was gonna harass this trader and get blown up by him so, so you guys can see what it looks like when you die. And I guess I just underestimated the scaling that the game provides uh, so that it doesn't just completely annihilate a new player, I suppose. But uh, yeah, so there you go. I only have a tractor beam installed, so like, this piece of this loot that I got is just gonna chill out here for basically forever. And that's 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 a pretty good piece of loot, actually. So let's go ahead and get movement out of the way. You have the ability to control how many different stages of power your engines have for general movement. You also have a burst speed or a burst thruster that you can use for a limited time that will recharge itself after use. And then you have the ability to go full on plaid with warp speed. Now you don't have the ability to go up and down. There's no Z-axis in the game for your ship to move on. Some of the small fighters and whatnot will take advantage of the Z-axis to be flying all over the place. Your guns can shoot up and down, no problem. It's basically just the larger ships that don't have the ability to move up and down on the Z-axis, and it totally feels fine. Now, speaking of warp, they put in a couple safety measures uh, to prevent you from doing dumb things, like, for example, accidentally running into a station. Basically, when you're in warp mode, any object that comes close, it will pull you out or slow you down so that you don't ram into it, which is kind of nice. Now, that only applies to warp. Everything else, you're pretty much on your own. Now, I started playing this game on keyboard and mouse, and I was perfectly fine for a bit, and then I decided to go ahead and fire it up using the controller, and I found it to be a little bit easier to do uh, manage some of the controls. I mean, it is a lot of flying, there's a lot of navigation and everything, but there's also a lot of menus, which is a little bit funky using mouse and keyboard, especially when there's so many of them, uh, but uh, using a controller, obviously, with you know, B, A, and the directional pad, uh, it's much, much easier to kind of flip around through those. But to each his own, you could use any kind of controller you want with this, even a PS4, and it'll remap all of the uh, the art for the buttons that you see all over the place uh, to represent the PS4 controller, which is super nice. But yeah, basically, whatever you want to use, you can use it. Now, let's say you want to go ahead and swap out for another ship. First, you're going to have to need to earn the money, either by mining, doing missions, or playing the market, which we'll get to in just a moment. But what you see here is just a small chunk of the number that are going to be available to you as you progress in the game. On top of that, you can buy upgrades, uh, either things that allow you for more defensive upgrades like active shields, uh, also a stronger hull, uh, more inventory space so that when you're running around playing FedEx and like buying and selling things at different stations, you can hold more items. Uh, there's a bunch of things you can upgrade on the ship itself. Not very many of them are cosmetic, so whatever ship you choose is pretty much going to look like that outside of the turrets being swapped out. But I haven't really felt that that was a limiting factor to my enjoyment of uh, the game, given that there are so many ships available to me to upgrade to. By the time I customize one, I'm probably going to be trading in it for the next one up. So what is it to do in Rebel Galaxy? Well, let's go ahead and pull up the map and take a look. As you can see, there are lots of plotted points all over the place. Each one has, represents a different uh, station or an event or mission or just a cluster somewhere where you could go and mine if you wanted to. Yes, there's mining in the game. It's not the most exciting thing, but it's a good way to make a little bit of money, I suppose. Now, this map is uh, the same starting area uh, that I just showed on the other map, except as you can see, all the plot points are completely different because obviously the game takes things and shuffles things around so that way you get a unique experience for every playthrough. Now, while you can go run around the galaxy uh, creating your own story, it is basically kind of a sandbox, uh, you can follow the main quest line here to help guide you and also get you some extra credits and maybe even some loot and such. Uh, and the main quest line, as well as a number of other NPCs, are fully, fully voiced. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to understand what everyone's saying. Some of it is going to be obviously non-English, uh, but there's some, there's some dialects and some accents and stuff that you may recognize. There's a little bit of Australian in there. There was some hillbilly something in there. It's basically a little bit of everything. 
Now this chunk of footage I'm showing you is the only story stuff I'm going to show because this is the first encounter you have within two minutes. So I've spoiled the first two minutes for you. There you go. I'm sorry. But I also wanted to show that at times you're going to have an opportunity to uh, select what your response is going to be. And it doesn't always result in anything. Sometimes it is like, okay, well, calm down, cowboy. Uh, and other times you can select it and they'll be like, all right, well, prepare to die and you'll get into a fight with somebody. So the dialogue choices sometimes have an impact on your gameplay and other times it does not. If you're interacting with NPC and you're trying to make a trade with them and then you decide to rob him, then obviously that dialogue choice will result in you getting to fight with that NPC. Now another thing you do is pick up missions while you're at the station and uh, these vary from station to station here and they're color coded based off of your gear. So the better gear and arsenal you have, uh, the, the fewer very highs you're probably going to see uh, depending on where you're at. Now mission types can vary from uh, escort style missions to uh, just simple assist missions or to drop things off or to do uh, FedEx type stuff. It's, it's kind of a standard mix of things to do and it's the difficulty that kind of adds the variation. Obviously you find different ships and whatnot, but there are some missions where it's like you go you go in you're like, oh, it's gonna be a standard defend mission. And then all of a sudden there's like a freak gets around and you're getting your ass kicked. Back to the station, we go to the bar, and in the bar you can hire mercenaries, which come in very, very handy, especially if you get a really good one. They basically like pets, they fly around, and they help you kill things. There's also the news board, which is super handy if you're working the market, because it tells you what's going on around the galaxy. If there's a big party somewhere, you know what, they're probably going to need a whole lot of beer. And so what you do, you go and you pick up some beer, and then you run it over to that spot, and you sell it for a profit. Now this is probably one of the most important parts of the game to get right. You buy low, you sell high. You want to go and scope out different markets because each individual station has its own markets. Uh, and then you see, you know, what the prices are. It will log it automatically. So when you go to the mini map and you hover your, your, your cursor over that station, it'll tell you what the prices were the last time you were there. That way you don't have to sit there write down every single thing. It'll also tell you a little bit more conveniently in the market itself on the lower right corner. It'll scroll through all the different places you've been, how long it's been you've been there, and what the prices were of that item item when you were there. And then you want to go and capitalize on that by finding the items that are available for a low price and then bringing it back to whatever station needs them the most and selling them for uh, for a markup. Now you can definitely get yourself trapped in a FedEx nightmare where you're running all over the place just trying to make a lot of money, but there is lots and lots of variation in there where sometimes a station can get taken over by the enemy and you have to fight through the enemy in order to get to it. Uh, or just while you're on their way there, you happen to just butt heads with a, a giant convoy of, of enemy ships. And, uh, or maybe you want to transport uh, goods that are uh, contraband uh, to the militia. And what do they do? They scan you when you get close and they're, they basically say, hey, we're going to fight you or you can give it to us or you could bribe us. So if you're looking to make yourself out to be the traitor of the galaxy, uh, don't think that uh, it's going to be a very boring experience. There's always going to be variation there. There's always going to be danger. There's always going to be potential uh, to lose your loot uh, should you do anything stupid. But it's definitely not going to be unexciting gameplay. Now mining on the other hand, I can't really speak to it. Maybe you get lucky and you blow up a rock and like a dude's come and swarm you. I have no idea. Perhaps somebody who decided to take up the mining life in Rebel Galaxy can uh, leave a comment below and let me know what their experience was. Let's take a moment to talk about factions. There are many of them. Some can be friendly, some provide benefits, and some are dicks, which means by signing up with them, you'll be a dick and your friends will think you're a dick and they'll try to kill you. The benefits are that you get access to special weapons, special ships, special uh, I don't know, other things, uh, but you have to earn them. You have to do missions to uh, get faction with them, and at certain ranks, that's when things will uh, unlock. Uh, thankfully, some of these missions pay out really, really well, like probably three to four times more than what you're used to getting at other stations. But that doesn't mean that every mission you get is going to be a walk in the park. I have a mission that's pretty simple. Go get some pure water, take it to some other place. That's it. Sparklets. I'm the sparklets guy. I go get water, and I deliver it to another place. Unfortunately, there's no water anywhere for me to get, so I spend the entire time running around looking for a nice jug of water to take to these guys. So not every mission is cut and dry. Now diving even further into combat, uh, you have the ability to go through and you can either manually aim your individual turrets if you like, uh, or you can uh, prioritize some of your automatic turrets to, uh, to only target other turrets, target uh, small fighters, target frigates, target basically whatever you want, and you can manage them on an individual basis. Obviously this can be pretty handy depending on the type of turret it is because some turrets are just going to be able to handle uh, other turrets a little bit better than others because of maybe their accuracy or their lack of, you know, just straight scatter type projectiles. So there's a nice mix of 
active management, and a little bit of prep that goes into each individual fight. So you're not just running around and just kind of making sure you give them the good shield sides. When they break through some shields, you can turn around and give them the other shield side. No, you're actually activating abilities, assigning turrets, swapping out between turrets to manually control them so that you can prioritize things that are actually kicking your ass versus things that maybe the computer thinks are, but they're not. A lot goes into some of these fights. P.S. All the music you've heard in the background of this BFF report was actually taken from the original soundtrack. It's pretty good. And if you don't like it, you can actually go through the launcher and select different folders you want to represent different parts of the game uh, with your own music. So if you want to have, you know, some negative page or something like that, you can do that. You can just select the folder and that's it. You're done. Now, if you're not already sold on Rebel Galaxy, let me let me go and add a little something extra to it, just, just to see if I can push you over the edge. Everything I've shown you so far in this BFF report has been in this in this world that was generated, right? So I showed you the map at the beginning, okay? And it was like, okay, we do all that stuff, all the FedEx stuff, all the action, all the missions, everything has taken place here. This is a jump gate. It lets you go to other systems that are just as big as the one I just spent 12 hours in. It seems kind of ridiculous. Two days of gameplay and I've literally only just started. Really, at this point, the only complaint I have is that there's no multiplayer. Multiplayer in this game would basically so it would blow it out of the water. It would be, it's a $20 game right now. It'd be a $30 game or more if it was a multiplayer experience or co-op experience. But other than that, I am having a blast not having to babysit other people. It's just me, a cargo hold full of illegal shit, and a seemingly unlimited number of paths laid out before me in this gigantic space mining rogue fighter Wall Street trader interstellar sandbox. Thank you for watching the BFF Report. My name is Mike B, aka Phone. You can find me at twitch.tv slash aka Mike B, streaming pretty much almost every day. You can also find me on Twitter at the same place, aka Mike B, just about everywhere. And if you want to go and buy Rebel Galaxy, which I highly suggest you do, you can check the link in the description below or just do a Google search for it. It probably will come up. Thanks for all the support, guys, and I'll see you later.